the top and bottom of our pattern has been notched but we did not notch these sides here this was a pattern that of course we that was previously made okay and those were not notched so we're going to just notch this and this notching really makes it easier to align our patterns you don't have to measure just take it off and um, just don't make it too deep you don't want it too deep and you don't want it too insignificant you know a little chintzy hole is not going to cut it all right all righty so now let's mark this out on our chipboard bring this to the side as best possible and to the front because we really don't like to waste but we don't want it to be off so we're going to be very cautious how we do this all right so there we go there is my ball I want to make sure I know where I'm going with this how far I'm going so I'm just going to pierce on my line, my fold line. And then I'm just going to mark around we have it. I don't I don't have to go down this middle line because this is not going to be folded. We don't want to fold it. So I'm going to get in here in my line, my sorry, my my pierced hole. Test it and just cut this off. Now I realize this part at this angle might be a little funny for you to see. Okay. Okay, so now to make this a little easy, I'm just going to cut straight down on my line. All right. You can get your template and match it up to cut this or you can just go for it and free hand it like I normally do just press hard and stay on the line take your time There we go. Now this piece here, I can be a little more accurate than that. There we go. And our notch. Let's get this notch out of the way. So we got to go with these. And we're going to use our pattern, which we did not name and label, but we'll do that next, okay? So <clears throat> I'm just going to smack a 
Let's measure up. This is the pattern that was made some time ago and I've not used it yet. So I just want to make sure that my measurements are correct. All right. All right. So now we have this. We don't have to do any piercings. We're just going to take this and take our, our craft knife and go around. Be careful not to cut your pattern. You just want to cut the foam and it really is an easy cut. You have to keep washing your hands with these things, especially when it starts to get to the fabric because it's so easy for your fingers and your fingernails to get dirty. That's just a part. It's just a part of purse making. Oh, let me take it this way. Okay, so we want to cut out our notches. Even this, see. Okay. Okay, we let it relax and you take a look at it because sometimes, you know, you just, when you pull, you're going to be stretching the foam and you want to make sure it's accurate. There we go. All right, there we have it. We are well on our way well on our way. Okay, <clears throat> so we have the foam, we have the pattern, we have the, the flap insert, we have our outside fabric that has already been cut. And it will have to be trimmed up a little bit, but I'm going to do that after I um, attach the fabric, because once you start painting fabric, it, it shrinks in different directions. So <clears throat> this was pre-cut and then painted, and that's why there's some shrinkage. Okay, so now we have, let's take care of first things first. I promise to label this. What should we call this How about one? Rain. Not a jazzy name, but it came up. To, it came to mind because I have a cousin called Lorraine. Could you believe that? Okay, so Lorraine, and we're going to cut. We're going to cut for the purse. We're going to cut four pieces. So we're going to cut the one outside fabric, 
one inside fabric, one foamy, and we have to do this at two millimeter. We don't want a three millimeter. That's a bit too thick, I feel. And then we want one of the chip board, which is optional. You don't have to put that in the flap if you don't wish. I think it gives it a lot more structure and body. It looks much nicer. And that's it. That's all we need for this. I did not put here that this is the bottom of the closure. So It's just so much help, more helpful when we could leave notes to ourselves and notes to those who might be sewing for us. Okay, and now we're going to cut our lining. So we're going to mark our fabric. I'm marking on the wrong side. I do not want to mark on the good side because I might shift my pattern or change the way I'm laying out. I don't want to waste fabric. I'm not going to mark this out in chalk, although chalk is a good thing to use. You can use a chalk pencil or you can use just the, the chalk itself, the body, you know, the tailor's chalk. I'm not very fond of the tailor's chalk because it doesn't stay thin. It gets fat as you use it and, and it, it makes my line inconsistent. So really, I prefer to use a pencil. In this instance, I'm going to use a pen on the wrong side so that you would be able to see it. Okay, I'm running my pattern parallel to the edge of the fabric. And I'm going to hold this down and just trace around it. Slightly off the table of my cutting board. So let me line it up again. You know, if you set these up, you can cut several at one time and really have a production line going for yourself. There we have it. Now before you move it, you're going to test it. You're going to hold one side down and flip it up and see if you've gotten it marked correctly and flip the other side up. And you're just going to check out your work. Bang, there you have it. The next thing we're going to do is cut it out. I have my electric cutter, but for those who don't have one, I'm just going to use my scissors for you. Cutting directly on the line. I'm keeping my scissors on my cutting board and I'm not making too large. I'm not trying to close down my scissors all the way. You know, you want to preserve your scissors too. You don't want to be cutting paper with your fabric scissors. And if you have a little slip up, just know that either a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch, either inside or outside the line, it's okay. It's redeemable. simply because you're going to be putting the webbing on it. Okay.
I don't like to use my electronic cutter for painted fabrics. It gets the it gets my blade gummy. So I tend to cut pre-cut my fabrics or cut them with scissors afterwards. Okay, so I'm just going to continue not cutting my notches out and then we're going to be ready to move on to the next level.